Hello, and welcome to this gathering of Open. I'm Pastor Jonathan Perry. We are so grateful to be gathered with you right now. It means so much to be able to connect with you in this way from the places we are right now together. It fills our hearts and stirs our souls, and we hope that you're finding encouragement and hope and life in this too. Today, in addition to gathering together, we're celebrating our graduates from high school and college and grad school. We are so proud of them for accomplishing these milestones. And it is worth celebrating, especially in this time. Congratulations, friends. We are so proud of you. And we're so proud of you, too, of all of us. We've achieved the milestone of another week, y'all, and that is something. We are inspired by you and we're lifting you up on your journey. We lift up especially those who continue to serve on the front lines and in essential places, and those who love them. We lift up those who are returning to work and those who are without work. We see you, we love you, we are in this together. Most of all, God is with us all, each step of our journey, and especially now. If you're watching with us right now, we'd love for you to go to opendtx.com slash sign in and let us know that you're here there's also a place there that you can let us know how we can be lifting you up or joining with you in praying for what is on your heart. And we hope today that wherever you are, that in our time together and beyond, you find some of the hope and renewal for your steps to keep going in the loving presence of God that is with you now in every step of this journey. So wherever you are today, welcome. You are welcome here. Even more, this place is for you to help you connect with God, with each other, with yourself. We are in this together. We need each other. And together we are held and held together by a God of love who is with us every step. So to center our hearts around that, we've got some friends who are going to lead us in liturgy this morning. And the words that we'll speak are simple, but they are profound. That wherever you are, wherever you find yourself on this day, in the heart of God and the love of this community, all are welcome here. Friends, let's lift this up together. We come together to seek God, trusting that God is seeking us with open arms. All are welcome here. No matter our doubts or questions, where we come from or who we love, even in the chaotic seasons of life, we are loved by God. All, All are, are welcome, welcome here. We believe that everyone is a child of God. Every age, race, gender, identity, and creed all are beautifully and colorfully made and of sacred worth. All, all are, are welcome, welcome here. We affirm that God is a good God who lifts the oppressed, loves the vulnerable, and is open to all. So we choose to have open hearts, open minds, open arms, and open doors to God and to each other. All, all are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Open Worship. We're so glad that you're gathered with us from your homes today. Um, at this time, we just want to invite you to greet each other in the comments and to let each other know that all are welcome here. And also, if you have a moment, if you could pop over to opendtx.com slash sign in and let us know that you're here this morning. We really appreciate it. Even if you've done it before, um, it helps us get a clearer picture of who all is gathered with us. And um, we are so grateful for um, you doing that. And at this time, if you would just continue to greet each other as we begin worship. <laughs>
Hey guys, my name is Crystal and with me today I have my friends Clay and Brandon and Dave and Kelly and we are your worship leaders this morning. We just want you to know that whoever you are, whatever your story or identity is, God's love is here for you and so are we. And if you would, just continue to worship with us this morning.
justice roll on like a then worship turn into Good morning, everyone. My name is Hannah, and I'm the intern here at Open Worship. And I graduated last week from the University of North Texas, which is super crazy and super exciting and wonderful, and also terrible <laughs> due to just the nature of the event itself and also the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Uh, so to all my fellow graduates out there, whether it's high school or college or grad school, uh, I'm with you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. And to everybody else, thank you so much for being here today to celebrate the achievements of all of us who've done the thing <laughs> over the past few weeks, or maybe your graduation's coming up and you're getting close to the finish line. And so if that's you, keep going. Uh, I'm grateful that you're all here today. So the next song that we're gonna hear is actually an open original, meaning it was written here in this community. And it's a song called Let Me Be Held. And it's one of my personal favorites. And just because like, it's a beautiful song and it will get stuck in your head, but also because the lyrics are really meaningful. And I've found a lot of comfort in them through many different seasons of my life, including this one. <clears throat> and so, one of the lyrics that's really been on my heart over the past few weeks has been It goes like this. It goes when I seek your peace you call me your child Let my steps in your promise leave a blessing behind and I think the reason that that's been so much on my heart is when we're in these times of transition and graduation and crossing the finish line We tend to feel like you know, okay, what next? Where's my next step taking me? And <clears throat> these words encourage us to not worry so much about the next step, but to focus on the promise that lets us take that next step and to rest in the hope that, you know, wherever we go next, we will leave a blessing behind us because we're walking in the promise of God and of love and we are children of God, and that's what we should always strive to do, even when we don't know where we're going or where that next step is taking us. We can let ourselves be held, and we can rest in that promise. So I'd like to invite you, as we listen to this next song, being performed virtually by our very own open choir, um, I would love for you to just take a moment, whoever you are, you know, whatever milestones you find yourselves nearing, to just take a moment and be held. Let yourself be held instead of trying desperately to hold on, because you deserve that. So friends, without further ado, here is a very special performance of The Open Choir. I cannot hold you 
that your spirit would lead us to new places, that we would have trust in you that has no limits. God, we ask that you would continue to open our hearts a little wider for what it is that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Hannah and Crystal. Thank you to you for joining with us. We are so grateful for this time we get to share together. And thank you to the choir and to Max Mullenkamp, director. That was awesome. It's so special to take something created in the sacredness of this community and see the life and love that creativity gives and continues to give to us all. That's the beauty of the beloved community, that each of us have a part to play in this, that each of us are bound together, part of the flourishing of each other in our world and held and connected by the God who holds us all and who is in those connections between us all. And so today, in the midst of this connection, in addition to gathering together, we are celebrating. We're celebrating some of our graduates who've achieved some pretty amazing milestones this year. Graduating from high school and college and grad school, we are so proud of you. And especially this year, amidst everything, your resiliency and tenacity is so laudable. We're so proud of you and grateful to be with you on this journey. Excited to see what God and you have in store for the next steps and seasons. Congratulations, friends. Deepest congratulations from all of us. But it is, of course, a different year this year. You don't need me to tell you that. Graduation looks different. The end of the year looks different. Even next year looks uncertain and different in so many ways. Normally, one of my main pieces of advice to those who are headed off to college is simply go to class. <laughs> and now it is maybe the opposite of that. It might simply be that when you do log on to class for Zoom, make sure that you point the camera away from the laundry pile that's behind you or just embrace it, however you roll. But it is different and definitely different this year, but it's different for all of us together. Sometimes graduation Sunday can seem like a very specific message for a few folks that are stepping out courageously amidst uncertainty and the rest of us go, oh yeah, I remember way back when I stepped out in uncertainty. Those were the days, right? But truthfully, it's never been that. It has always been for all of us. In some seasons, the choices seem more momentous or maybe there are periods of, of relative calm, but choices and decisions and uncertainty are always before us for all of us. In fact, a Cornell study showed that each day modern humans make about 35,000 choices on their journey, about 200 of which are about food. And as our grad students know, there are a lot of ramen flavors out there to choose from. But there are always choices before us. Right now, they may be different than ever before, but there are always choices and decisions and uncertainty on our journey. Even if in some seasons, the weight of all of those choices is extra, but as we face them, even as they seem huge or difficult, we should always remember first the privilege of having choice in this life at all, and then seek to do the best we can in the choices that lie before us. But there are times when we look ahead at the path and the choices seem so huge for us. The next step seems so uncertain and making a move at all might seem paralyzing because the whole of life ahead can seem to hang on them. Questions of major, job, vocation, finances, relationships. Questions of how to choose the best for the health and safety of our communities like we are all making right now. How do we even begin to move forward to keep going, or some days get going, amidst that uncertainty and all the possibilities? Or maybe when we can't see the possibilities ahead, how do we move forward? Well, recently I discovered something interesting in the stories of Jesus in our scripture library. When he was walking alongside folks in the midst of those monumental moments in life, in the middle of those moments when the next step seemed uncertain or huge, Jesus would simply give the person a simple next thing to do, one next step to take. Check this out. After an encounter with Jesus changed the whole trajectory of a person with leprosy in Luke 5, Jesus says simply, go and show yourself to the priest, the next thing to do. To a healed paralytic, he said, get up and go home. 
to Peter who'd run away from everything and was returning amidst uncertainty to his life and community. And John, Jesus said simply, come and have breakfast, Peter, to a family whose daughter had just been healed. He did not give them a grand sermon for how they would now change everything. Jesus simply said, give her something to eat. Over and over, with what seemed like a world that had just changed, trajectories that were transformed, monumental next steps ahead that could be paralyzing, Jesus simply said, do the next right thing. Rather than a life plan or a clear vision or a five-year list of goals, it was simply about taking the next right step, doing the next right thing in love. And often, that next right thing is about going home and resting or getting something to eat, which is always good advice, but over and over, it is simply do the next right thing in love, and the rest will come. And I say, do the next right thing in love, because that resonates with what Jesus said. He said if we're looking for guidance, all the ethical and teaching of our faith and tradition come down to this, love God, love neighbor as you love yourself. A moral philosopher like Chidi Adagonye could have saved a lot of classroom time with just those cliff notes. But if we're looking for a next right thing amidst uncertainty, one great question to ask It's just that. What is loving? It's loving of God, that is, of the things that God loves, justice and joy and peace, that universal holistic flourishing that is the peace of God. Or what is loving to our neighbor and those who are entrusted to us? What is loving to ourselves? And of all of those things, simply ask what then is right for us and next? There are many good things we can do, but what is our next right thing? What is the next right thing in love for us? I discovered this insight in a book that Lindsay picked up called The Next Right Thing by Emily P. Friedman, who also has a podcast of the same name. And now, of course, Elsa and Anna are giving that same advice. And so you know it's a good life lesson if Elsa and Anna are giving it. Let it go do the next right thing, and build a snowman if you get the chance. That's all good advice, y'all. But this insight didn't come from, from them themselves. And it's, it's been echoed by so many through the ages. People like Mother Teresa, Anne Lamott, Theodore Roosevelt, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who often said things himself like this, faith is taking the next step even when you don't see the whole staircase. And I love that Dr. King connected this with faith because that is what we learn when we take life one step at a time, one breakfast at a time, one phone call or email at a time, one next right thing in love at a time. We begin to learn, and even more than learn, live from a trust and a tenacious faith and hope in the goodness of the God who is at work around us and in us and through us, for us and before us in this life who even in the profound struggles of life is comforting us when we pause, empowering us when we step, taking our small steps in love and connecting them to the work of capital L love in our world in ways that we cannot imagine. We can look ahead, we can plan, and we should do those things. We can't jump ahead to the end of the plan. Life is a series of steps, next step after next step. And it's in those steps that life happens. It's in those steps that we learn who we are and who God is and how even our little steps in love plant seeds all along the way that grow into life. And often, I think in many ways, I've seen in my life that when we're faced with a choice, the specifics of what we might end up deciding are sometimes less important than how we go about deciding to begin with. Very seldom are there black and white choices. There's goods and grays down every path. Seldom about the specifics of which path we choose to walk, but how we choose to walk it and who we choose to walk it with and for. Your major or where you work first matters less than how you work. Those simple next steps of showing up each day to do the next right thing, to walk your path, to pursue your life with openness and kindness and tenacity and curiosity, to walk in right love with God and neighbor and yourself. 
those next steps will open more doors and build more life than you can imagine. And when you stumble in your steps, and we will, that stumble matters a whole lot less than the simple act of getting back up and putting one foot in front of the other, simply doing the next right thing wherever you are. There is always a next step, no matter what. And your courage to take it makes you stronger and takes you farther than you know. See, what we do for a living is less important than how we live. What we're going to be is less important than who we are becoming. And the God who loves you and knows you and shaped you and formed you, God loves who you are becoming and wants you to be ever more who you truly are in fullness, in every circumstance, in every season. And we learn how to do that in the midst of our circumstances each time we take our next right step in love. We learn more about ourselves. We learn more about what our next right things are, about who we are, about what we love, what moves us, and how we move in the world, and how we may be a part of moving this world for good. We learn how to trust in the God who is good, and be part of that goodness, even in the smallest steps. We've got a lot of chances to learn that on our journey. Every day we have 35,000 choices to make, and 200 flavors of ramen to choose from. So we've got practice ahead of us on our journey. Graduates, already you have taken so many steps to get to this point, and we are so proud of you. Right now, you are stepping out in faith and hope and love, and we are inspired by you. That even in the uncertainty, you are just doing the next right thing. One assignment at a time, one email, one phone call at a time, one step at a time, doing the next right thing. And for the rest of us, you also have taken so many steps to get to this point. And right now you are stepping out with courage, even amidst uncertainty. We are so inspired by you. Even in the uncertainty, you are doing the next right thing, one step at a time. Often, if we stop to think, look around, breathe, the next right thing can be clear to us sometimes. Log on to class, eat lunch, call that person who's on your mind. But sometimes it's not so clear. We need a little help in our discernment. And if you need that, don't be afraid to ask. God and the goodness of God is with you. Don't be afraid to ask. You can find it in wise friends and wise counsel. Don't be afraid to ask. And you can find it in yourself. Don't be afraid to ask there either. We've talked about that question that Jesus asks for our next steps. What is loving? to God, neighbor, ourselves. Ask that question. And here's some others that you can ask to help clarify things for you. What is loving? What is right? What is necessary? What is kind? What is important? When you hear the answers from those questions, simply do your next right thing. You can also ask, what is life-giving to me right now? What fills me and leads me to flourishing? Which is such an important question, especially when it gives us permission to say one of those gracious, courageous no's. I don't mean to say that every day is to be hakuna matata and all. Laundry may not feel life-giving, but having done laundry is sometimes very life-giving. <laughs> and those are the two ancient wolves that are battling it out in our souls and in our laundry baskets. Another piece of discernment advice is what someone told me once. Look for the places that your passion intersects the needs of your neighbor. Or another from Demi Prentice in this community, who's taught us that where there's a relationship, there is vocation, there is calling. And so in those relationships that are most dear, what is your calling? Listen and do the next right thing. As Jesus simply said, love God, love neighbor. Love yourself and do the next right thing. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next semester will hold or what the job market will be like in the future. There's so much we do not know, but we do know what will be required of us when we get there. The same thing required today to do the next right thing. The best way to prepare for the future is to do the right thing today. And so we can begin right now walking the path that will become our future. 
And when we stumble, we can get right back up and take the next step because the God who is working all along our journeys, that God is infinitely merciful, loves us through every stumble and cheers us in every step. God is with you. In the end, that's why Jesus could so confidently keep it simple. I mean, how could Jesus say, do the next right thing? Because he knew God is right here with us in everything. In this step, and in the next step, and the next, and the next. The goodness of God, the kingdom of God, the presence of God is here, right here, right now. And when we walk in love, we walk in God. The love of God embraces all without exception. So simply do the next thing in love. You'll find yourself embraced by the God who is love. Friends, as we all seek to do that, especially right now, we are with you. We're in this together. We are with you. We are for you. But most of all, the God of love is with you and for you too. So I want to close with the words that Emily Freeman uses to close her book, The Next Right Thing. She writes for us this beautiful exhortation, poetic and prayerful, for all of us on our journeys. She says this, Our choices shape our lives and they shape us, but we remain in God's hand no matter what. We are held as we sang today. So let's begin to trust ourselves as we walk with our good and loving God. Let's embrace the courage to choose what's best and the faith to come back when we choose what isn't. Let's refuse to carry shame for our lack of clarity, but allow our questions to linger if they need to as we wait for seeds to grow. Let's remember that though we may have to wait and see, we never have to wait to be. And so with all we are, let's bring who we are and who we are becoming. Let's bring our unknowing into the kind presence of God, and let's continue to create space for our soul. To name the unnamed things within us and to do our next right thing in love. Let's continue, she writes, on this journey together. Graduates, friends, let's continue in this journey in love with God, with each other, with ourselves simply doing the next right thing in faith and hope and love, continuing step by step along this journey, always. Graduates, we're so proud of you. Thank you for showing us how to take the next steps. May we continue. Amen. As we continue in worship together, let's let this be our prayer today, especially in this time. And let's let this be our prayer for the graduates that we celebrate today. God is with you. May you walk in faith and hope and love as you take your next step in the love of a good God. Hello Isaac, I just wanted to take this opportunity to tell you how proud I am of you and what an honor has been for me to be part of your journey. I've seen you grow from freshman year to now graduating senior and I could not be more proud of you. As you are moving on to the life as an adult, I want to leave you with uh, uh, an important message and that is always follow your heart, find your purpose and write your own story. You'll do great. Good luck.
You have both been such a blessing in our lives. We are so proud of you, love you so much, and cannot wait to see what the next chapter holds for you. Hope you'll have fun down in College Station, and I'll miss beating y'all in spike ball and ping pong. We love you both, and giggle mag! Hi, Allie. Congratulations on your graduation. It has been a pleasure to be your family group leader for these years. You always brought such joy to our outings, and you will continue to be in my prayers on your new journeys. You've got this. Congratulations, Max, on your graduation. You know, working with you in the open choir, it's been great to see just how talented and skilled you are as a result of your musical education and just what an excellent leader you are at such a young age. It's very impressive. We look forward to seeing what amazing things you're going to do with the gifts that God has given you. However you decide to use them. Congratulations. Well done. Graduate. wish you a happy graduation. I'm so excited for what your journey is going to be next and I can't wait to see the amazing things you're going to be doing here in, in the world. Thanks for caring for Open for all these years. I can't wait to watch you grow. you now to join in a recognition and celebration of our graduates in a liturgy for a time of transition. Graduates, you have a special part that is indicated in the words here that is uh, for you to speak and community, family of faith and friends who are with us. Your part is indicated by community and so we will join together now in this call and response as you stand at the crossroads you born of God's gracious love filled with gifts and abilities strengthened by the Spirit nurtured in family and community today we recall your journey and celebrate God's love in you. We rejoice and remember the path we have traveled. With you we shared Christ's table, sang and cried, lived and loved. We shared your journey. We promised to walk together in God's freedom and power, to imitate Christ and trust in Him always. We continue looking for God who marks the way before us. We thank God for all you have learned and accomplished, for all that you are and have. We bless you and send you now. Keep open hearts, open minds, open doors and open arms. With God's help, you will create a more beautiful, brave, and just world. And now all of us, because we are loved, we love. Because we are called and sent, we will glow with the light of God's love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Cake. Graduates. We are so proud of you. 
So many said today, we cannot wait to see what God is working through your next steps. Congratulations. We're so grateful for you, for who you are becoming and who you have helped us be and who you are helping us become. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for joining with us. It means so much in this time to be together. Right now, for open, gathering in this way is the next right thing for us to do this online. We'll continue to do that as long as it is the right thing, as long as science and safety and love for each other, our community, our healthcare workers and systems indicate that gathering online in this way is the most loving next step we can take. But while we're here, we'll give all we've got to these steps. In love, we'll give all we've got in worship, in connection, in support, and in service. We will take these next steps in all the love that we've got. And so one of the ways to do that to take steps in love is by serving in this community, in this city and beyond. And if you're looking for some ways to do that in this time, we've got some awesome opportunities. You can go to opendtx.com slash serve. And there's a place there that you can let us know about some of the things. You can see a list of opportunities in this community and throughout the city of ways that you can plug in and serve. And in the next days, we'll connect you with those ways you're interested in so that you can serve in this time. We've got a new one to highlight this week. Uh, this week, we'd love to, to check in with folks from this community. If you're interested in helping us, check in with each other. Make some calls and just say hello to the community. You can sign up at opendtx.com slash calls. We'll help connect you with each other and help us continue to be a community of love together. Another way to support this community is by giving to support the ministries and mission and community here. At opendtx.com slash give, you can find a way that you can contribute to this place. Not only are we seeking to continue to, to be a community together, but the church has made a commitment to take care of its hourly workers in this time, to be a place of solidarity together on this journey. And your support of that helps make that possible. Thank you so much for your generosity that has enabled this community, this ministry to continue strong. Another way to support is simply by connecting. Let us know you're here at opendtx.com slash sign in. And also, if you want, connect with us throughout the week through events on Zoom and on Facebook on Wednesday night game night each week, uh, which is a lot of fun. You can find the address for that uh, on Facebook and join with us on Wednesday nights. And Thursday night, there's pub theology, which is always an enriching and thought provoking, deepening time. There's also a Slack channel ongoing throughout the week where we can just hang out in a group chat you can find that at Slack at the Open Worship Community, as well as some other small groups and activities that are happening throughout the week, but in all the ways that we can connect. We're so grateful for you. We're graced by you and all the glimpses of hope that we've experienced just by being in this together. So thank you. And thank you to the God who is with us all and is in all those that we celebrate today. Congratulations to our graduates. And so as we go into this world or into another room in our house, take this benediction with you as we go. May we go into the world, bear witness to the love of God in every step we take, trusting the God who is holding us every step of our journey. May we walk in love. May we walk in God. May we walk next step by next step in a love that is changing the world and us as well. So go in grace, go in peace, go in hope, and go in the love of God. Congratulations, graduates. We love you all. Amen.
see.